Welcome to the Personal PR Show. And here we are today with Brittany and Martina. Hello, girls. How are you? Hello, I'm amazing. How are you? Good, thank you. Good to see you again, Brittany, on the, yeah, on the Personal PR me. Show again. Yeah, awesome. Martina, how are you? Also good, thank you. And I'm also happy to be back. So thank you for inviting us and having this very juicy and very important uh, topic that I feel like no one really talks about. So I'm super excited what this hour brings um, together. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for making the time, girls. And um, this is actually our second second panel on the Personal PR Show. And we ran the first one last week because thus far we've only done interviews, like 50 interviews, but only interviews. And then we said last week, okay, let's try, let, let's start with panels. Actually, I ran a panel yesterday at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. And I think that this year I'm going to run a lot of panels. I love panels because interviews are already great because you can really see, you know, two intellects coming together and generating new ideas and angles and so on. But what happens when you have three people, maybe even four people, right, around okay. a certain topic and angle? So let's see what comes up, uh, what comes out today out of our conversation, which is going to be about visibility on social media. Martina is going to talk about the nervous system angle, and Brittany is going to talk about the mindset. Both of them produce a lot of content, and actually Brittany is even known as the queen of content, right? <laughs> so this interview, this interview, this panel rather, is very, very promising. Yes, guys, would you like to maybe um, explain briefly what you do? And which angle sure. you're coming from when it comes to visibility yeah. on social media. Martina, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Uh, originally, you go first. You can okay, first. perfect. So um, I'm Brittany Budd. I'm the queen of content. I have been a mindset and business coach for almost three years now. And I help female entrepreneurs to get really rich using their organic content, their, their brilliance, their brains, their zones of genius. And, you know, if you have an online business, you're, you're showing up, you should be getting paid for it. Right. <laughs> That's so true. Yes. Martina, what yeah. are your thoughts? And uh, what do you do? I love that, um, <laughs> just because uh, Brittany is saying you, you make women rich. Um, so I, I totally agree, right? I mean, we all have an online business for a good reason. And usually it's also not only to make the impact, but also to make money. And I help uh, female entrepreneurs, especially coaches, healers, um, female ones to really leverage their inner resources which i phrase very in a very grounded way it's just a nervous system to be really ready to receive the inner and outer riches because you know we all know like we have everything in ourselves but for many many people that's just not the reality and i help them just to you know navigate their online business with a very grounded model which is the nervous system because that also you know, impacts everything in your business and business itself, especially the online world is such a triggering spot, also in a very positive sense, obviously. And yeah, I help everyone like, like the female entrepreneurs to navigate that in a very successful and healthy, sustainable long term way. Yeah, which is amazing. Thank you so much, girls. And yes, I'm very fascinated by, um, by your approaches, because my approach is only, let's say, mind brain strategy and i deal with visibility visibility not specifically on social media visibility in general so i have let's say a holistic approach to visibility but yeah it's just to me um it's basically only um the product of the brain and what i put in an excel spreadsheet to be honest as there's a lot of creativity as well but there's a lot of structure too and so when it comes to mindset i'm very fascinated as what we need you know to consider and to implement when it comes to you know visibility in this case especially in social media and also from the standpoint of the nervous system the somatic standpoint so what is your approach specifically to visibility and to visibility on social media um martina would you like to start uh, yeah, so, so my approach is really to teach uh, women how to utilize their nervous system in the best way possible, because even though we function very similarly, we have all different, let's say, triggers and our nervous system is molded, I say, or is in, 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 a, in a kind of a different way. And then when we obviously in the online world and see so many people like celebrating the successes, um, that can be, you know, bringing us to a nervous system state that is very unhealthy for, for most of us. And I really like give them the, you know, the, the grounded 
somatic approach to first of all understand it cognitively but then also like to understand the nervous system cues so i have a, a method where i combine the two uh, because obviously nothing works without the mind but in this world we are focused too much on the mind and on the cognitive cognitive approaches in order to navigate our challenges and my method is really to help them feel comfortable as for who they are because that trickles in the content that you know is visible and tangible in in videos as well so um yeah that's what i this is my main method is really like to to learn that well however you start out in the online business it's all perfect because we you know we start from from you know priming the nervous system for you know for success but also like in a way that we can hold it mm -hmm. that is beautiful thank you so much martina yes and Brittany, what is your approach my approach is very similar to Martina's, um, simply because when when you're showing up online, and as she would she would know, you know our our nervous system gets thrown off when we don't feel safe. Like we we find ourselves in fight or flight, fawn or freeze situations, and being online, especially for our generation who's kind of been online since the beginning of online, we've seen you know, the, the dawn of the internet and how that has molded us. And for a lot of people, especially entrepreneurs, you know, we tend to be a little bit neurotypical, a little bit ADHD, those types of neuro differences than, than atypical people. And that really affects the way that we show up in our businesses because, you know, we don't want to be judged or viewed in a negative light and especially in today's world where cancel culture is such a prevalent thing we're a little bit nervous to say what we want to say because we don't want to rock the boat we don't want to get canceled you know we don't want to upset people but on the other side of that that's how leaders are born saying the things that everyone else is scared to say and so a lot of my methodology is going through what are you thinking about this situation? What are you thinking about, you know, saying this thing or showing up online or going on video that's mm -hmm. causing you to, to enter into a nervous system response so that we can reframe those thoughts, look at where they're coming from and help overcome them a little bit in, in, you know, conjunction with paired with some of what Martina does as well, which is creating that safety and and regulating the nervous system a little bit better and, and including those tools. Yeah, absolutely love that. Yes. So it seems like you have a lot of commonalities, girls. Yes. And um, it's good that we find the common denominator. And also, I think it would be interesting to know what the differences are. Let's say the commonalities and also the differences between the two methodologies. What do you think that Martina, what do you think that you do differently than Brittany? And maybe Brittany, what do you think that you do differently than Martina? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I just know a business world, uh, world and work, you know, just from, you know, what I see on Instagram and obviously what I saw from our last interview. So, but it, it's definitely, so when it comes to nervous system, I don't use the word reframe at all because for, um, because that's a mindset thing and it comes, you know, from various different directions. Uh, I learned it in NLP and I'm a trainer in NLP. So that's actually where I started. Uh, and that's also where I started my embodiment because a lot of things did not really work and were just very short term gains. So that's why I, you know, went back to a more somatic approach. And I think for me, when I'm, when I'm working with clients, it's more like to understand so that they understand themselves and really know that what we sometimes learn with, you know, reframing and all those amazing tools that do really work wonders but they are also a caveat to it and it's not sometimes something that will help us in a long-term and sustainable way because obviously there is always a deeper reason why thoughts are coming up and in the world of of in the nervous system work and the approach that i uh, I'm, I'm trained in is that thoughts you know are not uh, created um, out of thin air they are coming because we are in a different in a certain state of our nervous system and the, the state and influence is obviously what we feel the sensation in our body and that obviously also influences the way how we think 
um, and feel. Um, so this is kind of um, where I go into more the approach that, you know, yeah, your thoughts, we can go the route of, okay, what are you thinking? Where does it come from? But then there was also a beautiful approach that worked for me really, really the best. And I was just understanding in which state I did I drop in? What were the cues of unsafety? Where, where are some needs of my nervous system that I have not met? And, and if you take this component into this equation, that is for me really a very holistic way of working with yourself. Because I also see that um, some approaches do work at times and some don't. Um, and then also I take into consideration and teaching clients about their, you know, menstrual cycle and because that's in business so crucial. So everything like this is such a beautiful um, approach, but obviously I'm sticking to the nervous system as, as the one thing. So it might be that there is some where we have differences um, in, in our work, which definitely, you know, um, in the end of the day, doesn't matter as much because, you know, everything is, is working beautifully. but. For me, definitely. This approach is why I'm teaching is is just because it helped me. It was the last piece that I missed to become comfortable online, um, being visible and being also safe, knowing that if I say something more controversial or just saying my opinion, that there might be people dropping in that might be very harsh in the way how they respond to what I was saying. And that's why I'm, you know, happy that uh, Brittany was mentioning safety because this is the non plus ultra when we are in the online space to feel safe and to to understand what does safety mean for me? How does it feel? And how can I really make that happen? Understand what are the cues that make me feel unsafe? Hence, not doing the work, procrastinate, being overwhelmed and shying away from showing up consistently. Yeah, very interesting, Martina. Thank you so much for sharing. So it appears that you do appreciate mindset work and also reframing, although you don't use the word, you do appreciate it, but you think that maybe that's a step before it. So when we are maybe in a state of fight, fight and flight, maybe we should first tune into the body, in into our somatic dimension, so to say, and understand what is going on there. And then maybe in a second step, then go to the mindset to and do mindset work, right? Is it what I, have I understood correctly? Okay. Yes, exactly. So for me, you know, coming from because I was used to do everything like first, like analyzing and, um, you know, reframing and whatever else uh, tools that are out there. And for me, it's just like finding out, OK, what what were the cues that my nervous system was already communicating with me that I haven't, you know, yet understood or perceived in that way. Yeah. And it's interesting. I think the point about this, the, 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 the menstrual cycle because women are cyclical beings is a valid one is a very interesting one because of course maybe when we feel in a certain way we can tune into our body and we can also maybe look at the calendar and see which week of the cycle we are in right definitely absolutely that gives us already a lot of answers at least in my case (laughs) awesome Yeah, so next time I'm overwhelmed or whatever, fight or flight or whatever, stress reaction, stress response, I will definitely have a look at my calendar. Thank you. Perfect. So, Brittany, what are your thoughts around this? (laughs) I think that Martina made really great points. Her and I really don't do things that much differently. I am not nearly as educated as she is, but I, I have taken it upon myself to get Um, trauma somatics and nervous system regulation certified because I think that coming from you know the coaching industry in my opinion you know you you girls know a little bit of my story of losing two babies in the last couple of years I felt I felt that coming through the coaching world a lot of what I was being told and taught was well you're upset because of your mindset and if you just think different thoughts about your losses, then you won't feel so badly. And I was mm-hmm. like, this feels like gaslighting <laughs> because, you know, something that's so like traumatic within the body that creates a lot of stressors. Um, and so, yeah, I absolutely, you know, once I was in a good mental space, I took it upon myself to get certified in some of these areas because it's not just about reframing your mindset. It's, it's a whole body thing to exist as humans. You know, we're not just brains and bodies and 
you know, the nervous system works with the brain. So when you, when you talk about mindset, I think that you're doing your audience and your, your clients and your, your content a disservice if you don't understand the nervous system side and the somatic side of things as well. So I'm, I love that she's here sharing all this. Like I said, I, I'm just kind of a baby in this. Like I just have enough to, to get me by and make sure that, you know, I'm doing what's, what's best for me and sharing some tips with my clients, but having her here is this amazing resource is just wonderful. Martina, what what are your thoughts on this? I think that you agree because you were nodding all the time. (laughs) Yeah, totally. So first of all, thank you for sharing so vulnerably and bringing your own embodiment and that you, you know, recognize the importance to have, like to bring nervous system in and understanding that because you use the word gaslighting. And I think this is such an important part because sometimes we feel like when someone says like, yeah, like think different thoughts or, you know, reframe it this way. Uh, What about this? It might bring a temporary relief, but we come back to square one or we feel like misunderstood or and and feel like at least it happened with me very often. It's like something is wrong with me because if my mentor or coach is telling me like I should just, you know, change my thoughts and that will help me then you know and I am not able to do that that there's something wrong and then I start to self gas like myself as well because obviously I trust an authority more than myself Um, and I love when you were saying that you are going on also this route to bring in this in this you know the somatic and the nervous system you know topics and work into your own approach because i think this way we are so much safer as coaches mentors and people who bring the impact uh to to the world so i just like honor you for that and made me really like oh you know <laughs> so 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 um so happy to hear that Thank the industry you. is changing and that really the people who want to like as you said so beautiful you want you're here to make women rich and in in the in the really in, in a way that is so sustainable and not just mm-hmm. like okay that's quick and here reframe and things you know because those activations can be helpful but they can and we need and some people including myself we need something else to it to like hold it yeah Absolutely. And I I love what you just said about the sustainable, you know, it's very easy to find a coach that can help you, you know, do a flash in the pan where you just like have this big burst, you make a ton of money. And then what (laughs) your nervous system's out of whack. You don't feel safe. You're in a total trauma response. You're burnt out and it's not sustainable. And that's, I think that's why we saw so many coaches Mm -hmm. in this industry leave at the end of last year and beginning of this year so far just like walk away from their businesses and, you know, they're citing, I'm just going to go get a nine to five job because this is exhausting. It doesn't matter how much money I'm making. I'm tired. What good is that? What, what was that all for? Like we want sustainable businesses that can stand the test of time and can create for us. And again, I'll use myself as an example. I was grieving heavily for a good nine months of 2022 where I did not really take on any new clients. I was just kind of sustaining and maintaining the current clients that I had. And I still had a six figure year because my business was still chugging along behind me while I was, you know, laying on the couch crying and staying in my pajamas for days. And nobody wants to have to go through that, but you want to know that your business can, can stand. It's not fragile. It can, it can withstand mm-hmm. some storms for you. That's why we built them in the first place. So absolutely, I'm glad you said that. (laughs) That's amazing, girls. So we seem that we all agree on the somatic approach. And let's say that we are, let's say, in a stress response around visibility. And then we apply the somatic approach. We regulate our nervous system. What is the next step? Probably it's the mindset work, right? Maybe the reframing, although maybe, Martina, you don't like using this word, but let's say, let's go to the mindset. So Brittany, what do we do with the mindset at this stage, once we've regulated our nervous system? What can we tell ourselves in order, you know, to kind of reframe or whatever, um, you know, find a different angle to the situation and to really go out with motivation and conviction? Yeah, I think that this is a really great question because, you know, we have between 60 and 120,000, 60,000 and 120,000 thoughts in the run of a day. And Mm -hmm. something like 80% of them are repeated from yesterday. And something like 60% of them are negative. 
And so when we think about the brain and the neural pathways that are being created, if we think of it like a tree, you know, Mm -hmm. if you have this beautiful tree in your yard, we tend to go out and prune off the little, the little branches and the little bits so that the rest can get fuller. The brain is also doing that. So every time you try to make a new connection, that's probably for the positive, because like I said, most of them are very negative thoughts. And, you know, we're, we tend to be pretty mean to ourselves. Our inner critic can be quite loud. And that's born from the ego trying to protect you from harm because it doesn't want you to go and get hurt. It doesn't want you to put yourself out there and have hurt feelings and, you know, have your tail between your legs. And so when you start creating these new thoughts, if you don't keep trying those thoughts on and reinforcing them, your brain is going to come and snip those connections because they're going to go, okay, well, this isn't good for the tree because they're not, they're not producing or, you know, creating nourishment here. And so they just kind of come and start snipping, snipping them. And so it's so important when you're doing the mindset work that you continue, you know, catching those sneaky negative thoughts and going, no, I'm, that's not even true about me. Cause a lot of them are not true about us, right? Like, oh, everyone's going to hate me. If I say this, that mm-hmm. is just not true. And so once we have our nervous system We can never fully heal because, you know, there are always new layers of trauma, but once we've kind of (laughs) got the tools to, to hold ourselves in that, when we can tell truthful stories and continue to tell truthful stories, that's when, you know, those two things marry so, so beautifully together so that we can show up and go, no, my, my people do love me. No one's going to hate me if I say this. In fact, people might appreciate me more if I say this. And yeah, I mean, then you, then you have to start taking those, those new baby steps to, to showing up and creating that, that safety within yourself, like we've been talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Thank you so much, Brittany. And I see that Martina was nodding. So Martina, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, no, I uh, thank you, uh, Brittany, for bringing up, you know, how many negative thoughts that we have and like thoughts in general in average uh, uh, per day. Because, you know, that already, you know, illustrates that, you know, we have those thoughts coming and there is no way that we can avoid them. You know, it's just where we, you know, get aware of, you know, and for me, what always helps me is if I really catch something very sticky, a negative thought, I'm really also asking myself, where's the evidence in the outside world, right? Because obviously then I don't see something if I'm like, let's say uh, on a call, like we are today, you know, and I have a feeling that someone is like, avoiding me or not liking me you know and then asking myself you know first of all noticing that in in my body and then really like just taking a a breather and then just like okay where is the 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 evidence for that and obviously very often i don't have one it's just something i know it's coming up in my nervous system because there might have been something in my past that this was the case in my childhood where i was not like in a friend circle um accepted as as i was and then it's also for me um, so so just very important to when I know that this is actually not true and also to understand that this is normal that this comes up during my day and that the thoughts still come up, um, even though I have done a ton of work and that is just OK, like like bringing a lot of compassion for for that very thought or the multi like the the range of thoughts that were, were popping into my consciousness and just making that totally okay and because you we have an inner critic and or a part in us that is you know trying to convince us try to blend in with our self energy and wants to take over that's why we get activated in our nervous system because that part obviously or that inner critic is trying to protect us and also making that inner critic you know like being compassion you know towards it not resisting it either right and making like yeah you know I talk to my inner critic a lot, to my resistance. It's like, okay, that's okay. Even if that person really don't like me, it's okay. You know, I know that I love myself, you know, because what it usually boils down when I have negative thoughts or my clients, for example, is always you believe them. You believe that about yourself. Otherwise, it wouldn't sting as much, you know, because if if I notice someone avoids me kind of in a conversation or it appears to like, don't really like me, you know, whether that's true or not, for me, it's always like, Do I like myself in this moment? You know, am I accepting for this experience that's happening here? And if this is a no, then I know I have work to do within myself. 
and that I might have a wrong perception because the nervous system has this neuroception, right? It's like this automatic, um, I always call it security camera that captures everything. And there might be a cue, some, and also a misinterpretation, right? So it's not that it's always the right uh, interpretation of someone's body language, but I have like, depending on which, in which state I am, I might misinterpret, let's say Jessica's facial expression. So something very neutral, is for me then a threat, you know? So there's so much to it uh, and I don't wanna go too much into it, but that's how I, you know, knowing all this and also I'm teaching this to my clients, you know, that gives them so much material to, you know, depending on in the situation that they are in to just at least come back to the compassion. You know, you don't need to know everything right away because that does takes time and in practice, but at least come back to the compassion, you know, checking it out if that's really true in the outside world. And even if it's true, you know, do I believe that, you know, do I like myself in this moment? And I think for me, this is sometimes the work that I do on, on a daily basis. So, you know, I'm not always going into a nervous system and, you know, cue safety, you know, sometimes it's just as simple as just like, do I believe it? Is there something in me that I don't like? Or I don't know, like um, I'm resisting and that's then the work that I'm going after. Yeah, and um, also what I wanted to say before is because of the influence body and mind and also Brittany was mentioning, right? It's like all working together. It's really just this, this power because, you know, in the last 10, 20 years, there was so much emphasis on the mindset and on, on, the, on the cognitive perspective. And now with the nervous system approach where science proves that 80% of the information from our organs, you know, through the, through the nervous system are coming from, from the body up to the brain and 20% are coming from the brain back to the nervous system. So that alone shows the, the power and the potency behind a more holistic approach, like not using just, you know, the, the top down, but also the bottom up. And that's what makes us then more whole in the whole, you know, entrepreneurial venture. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Martina. Yes. So it seems that certainly you are represented a somatic approach, but it seems that you follow also the mindset approach, maybe to a lesser extent, but you also do. Yes. Which of course um, you have in common with Brittany and Brittany, the other way around as well. Awesome. I love that you have similar approaches and everybody's got their own specialties. But um, but yeah, the, we we all agree. We all agree, I think, um, on the need of applying, let's say, a holistic approach, which is great. Yes. Let's get to the details now of your practice, girls. So, Brittany, what are the, let's say, the negative thoughts or the limiting beliefs, uh, whatever we want to call them, that you see most in your clients when it comes to oh. visibility on social media? Oh, I think, <laughs> I think as women, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm going to bring up the patriarchy here. <laughs> I think we all kind of have the same thoughts of who am I to do this? Mm. Who do I think I am to try to do this? That's like, I think that that's like a universal thought among women is who do I think I am mm. to yeah you know, try to do these things. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if you're going for a job or you're applying for, you know, to go to school or starting a business. We have this thought of, well, who am I to to do this? What's so great about me? Why do I think I can do this? Who do I think I am? It breaks my heart because we're all amazing, beautiful creatures, and we're more deserving than anything to have the things that we want. But Absolutely. That is the most common thought that I see and experience still yeah. in my day-to-day life, no matter how much work I do, it still comes up for me. It comes up to you for you as well. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. Martina, is this something that you hear from your clients as well? Definitely. I so, so agree with, uh, with what uh, Bridget says, because in the end of the day, it's always this worthiness issue and the, the beliefs are like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough. I need to learn more. I'm not ready yet. Right. And then obviously like, you know, who am I? I think this is then the very, the, 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 the thought or the belief that triggers it all. Right. Um, who am I to, to do this thing when I see that there are so many established people who may be more eloquent in their expression and have a, a better, bigger branding and all those things and may have even more experience than I. Right. And then 
you know, coming along is like, who am I to talk about this, right? But we all start somewhere and usually it has something to do with that we're not embodying yet the language, but regurgitating the information and that's where this unworthiness piece sometimes trickles in. So, but I, I agree, this is definitely something in the underworld world that I see also among seasoned uh, coaches too. So, wow. yeah. Oh my God. Um, it's on one side, um, it's very interesting. Like it's nice to see that we, we are dealing with the same problems, but in different ways with different approaches. But at the same time, it's sad to hear that this is such a popular, let's say, in a negative sense, a popular problem for women, right? Something that comes up as the number one problem with your clients. So um, when cli- when your clients report this problem or this you know, negative and limiting belief, what is usually your response to them? How do you support them? I'll let Martina start. Yeah, thank you. So I usually go back to, you know, how embodied their message is or the thing that they want to transmit and uh, communicate. Because to me, it's like if I'm regurgitating information and I haven't embodied, obviously, I'm feeling like an imposter. Obviously, I'm feeling like, who am I to talk about this? Because I have no, for myself, evidence for what I'm teaching here. And I think uh, to most of the part that I see in, in the coaching industry, and it's not to, to bash it in any way, but I see like when there's imposter syndrome coming up, it's often just like, because I'm, I'm just taking a new information I learned from someone else and just teaching it. And um, I, I somehow inside of me, obviously I know that this might not be so much the truth because not because the information is not truthful, but am I living this? Have I already embodied or have I applied this in my life? And do I really have like implemented this and can then speak from how I experienced? So this is where I see the disconnect very often. That's why I ask my my clients a lot of questions. And then it's sometimes very obvious where it comes from. Because if I'm teaching you guys something that I learned yesterday, because you know, I had I didn't sleep well, my dog was sick had maybe two, three hours of sleep. And then I was super sleepy the whole day. And obviously a lot of negative thoughts were coming up, but understanding that this is just because every time I sleep less, I'm more prone to this. And then, you know, can kind of teach you how I navigated this. I can do this because, you know, I have, I have done my work, but obviously Mm -hmm. if I just learned it from wherever, and then I tell you this, I might just have a part of me that's just like very insecure and feels like, oh my God, I don't know if, you know, I, I can actually, you know, talk about this in that way, because if there's any question coming, you know, how do I respond to this or just, you know, it's just not a a good feeling. But if I can say, yes, that's how I navigated that. And that's the detour I can, you know, provide my clients. I'm not feeling like an imposter. I'm also not claiming that this is the one thing that you should do or the one thing that will help you for sure. I'm also not like talking this way, but obviously I can hold them better and I can also hold people's you know counter arguments or saying that no this this doesn't work and that's okay right because if that doesn't work or resonate with them it doesn't make me feel like um i i said something wrong or i feel like you know who am actually i to talk about this because that's my experience i just teach what i experienced and i've done my work with so that's what helps my client a lot because they then they go back and uh they cut off all the pieces that they know they just regurgitate but haven't really experienced and can really not teach from that from that space. Yeah, that's very valuable. Thank you so much for sharing, Martina. Yeah, yeah. And how about you, Brittany? So how do you how do you support your clients uh, when they come up with these limiting beliefs, like the the classic imposter syndrome? I think very similarly to Martina, and to kind of piggyback off what she said to something that she said a little bit earlier was we do a lot of educating ourselves and then not enough implementation. I have to kind of laugh at some of these coaches that are out here who are certified and then master certified and then advanced master certified and they don't have any clients. Their business still doesn't exist. And unfortunately it's because they're, they have this narrative going on inside their minds that they're not good enough unless they have all of the certifications. And it's this inaction into actually going out and helping people that blocks them because, you know, they've, they've got this narrative that I'm still not good enough. I've got to have more. I'm still not good enough. 
-hmm. And so again, you know, I've, as we've been talking about this entire time, dropping into the body and, and asking how can we be safe here? Like, are more certifications actually the answer? <laughs> no, they're not. There's other things going on that we're band-aiding with multiple certifications, hoping that, well, if I just get this one, then, then I'll be worthy and deserving yeah. and good enough and smart enough to finally go and help some people. And that's not true. Like, yeah, if you, if you learned something yesterday, but you embodied it and then hit and you were like, yes, you don't have a problem turning around and telling your best friend about it. Right. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to getting clients and having people actually pay us for the things that we know, there's a different story going on. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I love that you have a sim very similar approach to this as well. Yes, we have so many commonalities here. This is beautiful. And um, unfortunately, we are approaching the end of our conversation. But I, we do have one last round of questions, which is very, very simple. What is a question that you would like to ask one another? Who would like to go first? Oh, I feel like I need a second <laughs> to think about what I want to ask you. <laughs> I want to make it so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah same I, I wish I knew that before I would have like thought about something that uh it's really a burning question but let me think um <laughs> I guess okay yeah, I for, think for, you go ahead no no please 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 I was gonna say value sake for 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 the people that are watching and listening and even catching it on the replay mm -hmm. what would like your most valuable tip that you could give to the audience with respect to creating safety in their bodies and, and learning more about understanding their nervous system if they're feeling a little uneasy getting visible today? Awesome question. Yeah, that's a really good question. <laughs> Hopefully it's no, not I try too to hard. Adjust. <laughs> no, it, I just try to, to condense it so that it doesn't go into a five, 10 minutes uh, riff about it. I think, um, you know, when it comes to 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 go to get to getting or becoming visible on in the day and I'm I'm not feeling like it or I don't feel like safe, just understanding um, what's going on right now in, in my life, right? Am I forcing myself to do something yeah. where I am just not in this state right now? So I think that's something as a, as a quick advice is always like, am I doing this because I desire it? Or am I doing it? Um, I'm out of lack of force. Uh, because that obviously doesn't work. Because if you try to force, you know, yourself to be now visible, let's say you want to go on a live stream, and you're just not in a state, then obviously that's not uh, gonna work. And even if you force yourself and press the live button, I can guarantee you your nervous system or there's a part will be a part in you that will sabotage it so that it's even harder to do it next time. So I always say like, um, don't don't just don't force yourself just understand what is the re what is the resistance about inquire because there's always something that will come up if you come from also from a, a compassionate state, obviously, if, if you're now very like agitated and, you know, unhappy that you are just, you know, not in the in the mood of having the resistance, then it's also resisting the resistance. So, you know, finding out what is the one need that hasn't been yet met or that I can meet right now so that I'm able to, you know, move through. So one thing is always understand what is the need that you haven't met or that you need to meet in order to move forward. Wow. I love that you just that touched on be like same. being uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that especially when we start talking about this stuff, we will, we will run into the people that will just be like, well, I'm just not going to do any of this stuff because it's uncomfortable mm. when really it's just like kind of a coping mechanism, right? Like I'm just going to stay in my little cocoon, my little safety net, my little comfort zone, and I'm not going to do anything that's uncomfortable. And so I think that's so beautiful that you just mentioned that because there is a huge difference between just being uncomfortable and doing uncomfortable things and like real issues that are going on. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. And this is one thing that I also want to just uh, quickly tell because it makes a whole lot of difference. So um, there's a difference between if I'm st stressing my system or if I'm stretching my nervous system. So obviously, you know, stress is always um, activating, uh, you know, a flight, fight or freeze response. If I'm stretching, that means I'm leaning towards something that makes me uncomfortable, but I still feel the safety. So for yes. example, if I'm not safe to go on a live stream, um, then I just invite a friend over and ask, can we do an interview? Can we do a fourth and back, you know? Or maybe I go into practice mode on Instagram. There is this, you know, where you can actually practice without going actually live and you can save yeah. that video and then repurpose it later. Or maybe I'm just not doing a live, but I'm doing a video. And then when I feel like it's, it's good, I will upload it, right? So there's a difference between stressing and stretching and we all are in stress. Everything that we do, very often is doing it under stress and that activates us in a negative way. So if I'm stretching myself, that means I'm still anchored into safety and I'm doing something that feels a bit like, Ooh, but if I'm stressed, I'm not, I'm not anchored in safety and you will notice the difference. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you just shared that part. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for asking. That was, that was a really good and amazing um, question. So now I think it's my turn, right. To, to bring up my question. So, um, Brittany, what would you say when it comes to, you know, making money online, especially for female entrepreneurs? What is, what are some, some tangible or intangible, um, tips that you would give someone who is not making the, making any money or, you know, a consistent amount of money? It doesn't matter, you know, how much it is. It can be a couple of hundred dollars to thousands of dollars. So is there anything that you can share, um, when it comes to, you know, what trips us up and what be something to, um, you know, that can help us. Yeah, what you absolutely. What we've been talking about feeling worthy and, and doing those stretchy things to get more visible, you know, being online is noisy. It's noisy mm -hmm. and people are out here looking to be entertained, right? Whether they want to learn something, they want to laugh, they want to, you know, see, find an interesting fact or relate or connect to other people being visible is how we connect with our audience, you know, creating content, whether it's written, whether it's video, whether it's audio, we're just doing podcasts. The content that we are putting out is what connects people to us. And it's how we entertain other people. And again, whether, you know, you're teaching or you're sharing facts or you're just connecting, whatever it is. And so for, for me, when I see people that aren't making the money that they want to be making, if I take a real look, it's because they're not being visible. They're hiding behind pictures of their kids and recipes and, you know, they're, they're telling stories, but they're not being bold and saying, look, this is how I can help you. Just talk to me, send me a message, book a call with me. Let's mm -hmm. talk this deeper and let me help you that fear of, I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to come across as being slimy. You know, we have this whole other complex that you girls would, would understand around money because women have always been told that we're not good with money and we should be clipping coupons and we should feel bad for going to Starbucks because we're taking money from our kids' mouths or, you know, food from our kids' mouths every time we get a coffee. So naturally we think that we're not good with money and we shouldn't be responsible for money. Um, and it, that's not true. None of that is true. And so obviously doing some, some healing work around those thoughts and those stories that have been brought in through generations, it's not too far from where we are now that our, you know, our great grandparents were in the great depression and there are, there are money wounds that run very deep. And so doing that healing work and then being really bold and saying, look, I can help you. I am smart. I am knowledgeable. What I, what I bring to the table is more than enough to be compensated for letting people see that and kind of getting a, a little bit more into that masculine side of, of that boldness and selling and, and showing off a little bit. Like, what's wrong with showing off a little bit? <laughs> I love this because Martina and I had this conversation a few days ago and uh, there's a lot of uh, com there's a big conversation in the industry about the feminine and the masculine energy in business right and we know that we need kind of a balance it can't be the perfect balance all the time but sometimes maybe it's 40 60 sometimes 70 30 I don't know but more or less a balance but we see a lot of people that are actually taking feminine energy as an excuse 
to be lazy. <laughs> Sorry, I, I put it like very, very blunt, bluntly. But Martina and I had this conversation a few days ago. And I'm a very, I think I have a very masculine approach, maybe too masculine in my business. But um, but at least I get things done. Sorry. And um, and I see sometimes like the, the all of, I don't know, maybe I'm getting too much into details. But Martina, would you like to add something to this? Because this is a conversation that you and I were having. Yeah, uh, totally. So I would call it avoidance uh, rather than lazy. And it's just, you know, from the nervous system uh, perspective, again, right? <laughs> yes. um, yeah. and I totally get and, and I love it because I know, Jessica, you and I, we, we get things done when we when we say we do. Um, and I think when you are, I mean, you know, masculine and feminine energy, I'm, you know, going a little bit away from this um, conversation, mm -hmm. because obviously the nervous system doesn't care in which energy, right? Um, but it's definitely avoidance, you know, to doing this uncomfortable thing, because if the female body is stressed, right, I mean, obviously, we are not very creative, we don't have the desire, and we women want to, you know, we want to be seen, but we want to desire that, you know, and then obviously, if I'm unconsciously always afraid, and then just f like thinking, oh, I just need to feel, feel it or think that way, and then I will do it, that's just not enough, you know. And a lot of yeah women who rely on that, you know, where they are just more in in the avoidance or in this uh, immobilization, where they just like think and wait, you know, maybe it yeah. could get better at some point, you know, um, it's just not um, getting you anywhere. And I see, I, I see a lot. I mean, a lot of former clients have been like this, um, and I see the people, you know, also in masterminds, the ones that are afterwards still doing the work and you know progress in the in the in the, in the business and the ones who actually fall off where you don't hear anything from them anymore or very inconsistent and this is something where that you know that needs to be tackled in the best way possible because even if you call in the support with VA OBAs and whatever and whatnot OBMs then this doesn't help because they need input from you you know, right. but if I'm avoiding those things, if I have some blockages there, obviously I'm, I'm not doing it. And it, it looks lazy, inconsistent, you know, and that's also not a good feeling. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Brittany, what, what are your thoughts on this? And by the way, we're nearly done. So maybe another five minutes if it's fine with you. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this? Have you noticed as well that maybe some of your clients or some of your audience get things done and others don't, right? And we can you know, talk about energy, feminine, masculine, we can talk about the nervous system, which is actually more appropriate, of course. Um, yeah. What, what is, what have you noticed um, in, in your clientele or your audience regarding this? Absolutely. Um, I see this too. I mean, I think we all can kind of see this. Um, and it doesn't help that there are lots of like, guru coaches out there who are saying, just like have a bunch of orgasms and eat a bunch of fruit and go to the beach and people will pay you. <laughs> like there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a bunch of orgasms and eating fruit and being on the beach, but <laughs> that's not the marketing that's strategy. <laughs> like that's not enough. I wish it was. That's just not enough. You have to actually go and yes. market and sell and say things that will you know, draw your clients in, you have to, you have to do the work too. If yeah. it were easy, we would all do it and we would all be rich. And that's just not the case. Absolutely not. Oh my God. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Brittany, we need you in our lives more often. Right? I'm happy to anytime. Thanks for having me back. It's been amazing. Maybe we can repeat this panel maybe in a month or two when we have time, we can repeat this panel and maybe take another angle of visibility, yeah. right? Or maybe another topic. I think we have so many to talk about. We definitely do. Yeah, right. Perfect. Then thank you so much, girls. Is there anything that you would like to mention before we go? I think I'm okay. I think it, like, thank you again so much for having me back and to do this with Martina. It's been beautiful. And it's like, what a wonderful and uplifting conversation. I, I'm so honored that I got to be a part of it. So thank you. Oh, and likewise, thank you so much. This has really, really been a privilege. We know how busy you are, you queen of content, Brittany. <laughs> Martina, your final remarks? Yeah, just um, my final remarks would just be like, I would love to repeat that because I think this is such a good conversation.
conversation that we touch uh, like we, we, like different angles and you know different ideas so i would love to uh, to repeat that as uh, in form of a panel and uh, tackle another angle so i i would be really happy because that was a really uh, juicy and uh, such a good conversation and sets my day up for absolute um, success and you know fulfillment it was such a was such a pleasure having this conversation with you the two of you and thanks jessica for all your good questions by the way they're always like you know bringing the best out of us so thank you you're such a such a genius as you call other people you are your genius yourself yeah, my final thanks. remark I actually never prepare questions because I always want to follow the flow of the conversation. That's why, yes. So I think of a question about 10 to 20 seconds before I actually ask it. There you <laughs> All go. right. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much again, girls. And thank you much, so, so much to everybody who's watching us. And uh, we will see you at the next episode of the Personal PR Show, which is going to be probably tomorrow, I think. Take care, girls. And take care, everybody at home. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hi.